All right, let's consider uh, for a moment uh, what nutrition means, nutrients. When a nutritionist, a, uh, a dietitian, describes nutrients, they look at, they divide it between macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients, really, there are three types. There are fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. Uh, you could consider water in there. It's because it's macro, that is, there's a large amount of it. And it takes up about 70% of our water, of our body. So I guess we could consider that a macronutrient. But other than that, the other three, and then the, that we just mentioned, other than that, there's what are called micronutrients. And these are vitamins and minerals, you know. Um, what do they do? Vitamins and minerals. The micronutrients basically are necessary cofactors in the functioning of enzymes. And what are enzymes? Enzymes are the workhorse of nature. Enzymes are how things happen. I'm going to give you an example. Let's, uh, you may not know this, or you may know it, but there's an enzyme called catalase. And the job of catalase is to take hydrogen peroxide and to convert it into water and oxygen. Why? Well, we produce hydrogen peroxide all throughout our body all the time. It's a, ne it's a natural product, uh, and it has a lot of uses. Uh, for example, it's necessary to make all of our sex hormones. It's necessary to make thyroid hormone, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, if it accumulates, it's dangerous. So we have an enzyme called catalase, and it'll convert it into water and oxygen. How quickly? Over one million times per second. That's a little faster than the speed of light. That's pretty quick. So we have that enzyme doing that. We have another enzyme doing 40,000 times a second, another one doing 20,000 times a minute, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what do we see? We see this incredible speed, this cohesive group of 100 trillion cells functioning, uh, all functioning, I mean, functioning as a whole, and all functioning uh, as a result of enzymes. So enzymes are little systems that do one thing, like they're either called uh, hydroxylases or decarboxylases, that is, they do one particular function, okay? So, um, in order for them to, to do their job, though, they need little cofactors called minerals like boron or zinc or selenium uh, or, a, or a particular vitamin, okay? So vitamin are organic cofactors and minerals are non-organic, that is, they come from the earth, they're pieces of metal, small pieces of metal or earth. Okay. Those are the micronutrients. So micronutrients, clearly, the ones of the earth come from the earth. They're you know, selenium, which is basically a, a, a kind of rock, a kind of mineral. And then the organic ones come from, uh, are made by either bacteria or plants um, or animals. Now, macronutrients, all macronutrients, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates are made by plants. Amino acids. That is an amino group, which is a nitrogen being connected to a carboxylic acid group forms an amino acid. If you have many amino acids, you have what are called peptides or polypeptides, which are called proteins, okay? The, they are made in, originate from plants, okay? Plants are the only ones that can take a body that's died or, or a, an animal that's had a bowel movement and can extract the nitrogen and connect it. Or there are, on the roots, there are these bacteria that are called nitrogen-fixing bacteria, and they'll take the nitrogen out of the air and connect it to it, okay? Animals can't do that. What animals do is they eat these amino acids, and they can modify them and convert them into different kinds that they need, but they cannot originate them. Only plants can originate them. Only plants can originate fats that in their seeds and their nuts. They make what are called oils. They have saturated fats. Animals will take them in and convert them and make them unsaturated and, and change them around and use them. But all fats originate from plants. <clears throat> all carbohydrates originate from plants. The fundamental of all, the most fundamental of all carbohydrates is glucose. Glucose is the end product of photosynthesis. Okay, so you got sunlight hitting the leaf, and the leaf has grabbed in the carbon dioxide and the water, and it produces energy and glucose. Glucose is the fundamental unit of carbohydrates. You get them strung together in a certain pattern, they're called starch. You get them strung together in another pattern, they're called cellulose. Those are the fundamental units of it. Okay, so these are the macromolecules. And just as a reminder, they're all made from plants. So when we ask the silly question to a vegetarian, where do you get your protein? They should be looking at the meat eater and saying, where do you get your protein? Okay. 
They get their protein the same place that horses do, the same place that oxen do, the same place that elephants do, the same place that hippopotamuses do, and the same place that rhinoceroses do. And that is directly from where Mother Nature makes them, and that is the plant. Okay? Now, those who like to eat the carcasses of animals are getting them secondhand from the animal who already ate it from the originator, which is the plant. Okay? I'm trying to help you turn around your thinking because, unfortunately, we were all raised in this system which has taught us to think upside down and backwards. Okay? We have all walked through the looking glass. This is Wonderland. We are in Wonderland. But suffice it to say that all macronutrients originate in plants and therefore by eating the plants we are getting the, mo the most pristine perfect of the macronutrients. Okay? Unless of course you have large cuspids, a long thin tongue, a jaw that only moves vertically and whenever you see something move can't wait to eat it like to rip the head off of rats and eat them alive if you're kinda like that then perhaps you do need to eat animals But most of us are not we're not that way so um, I present this information to you because I know that you already know it but you've you've been confused by it hopefully this has settled some of that confusion